Welcome to the Dynasty Nerds Fantasy Football Podcast, where we discuss dynasty strategy, rankings, and all things NFL. So get ready to geek out on fantasy football with your host, Rich Dotson. And welcome to the Dynasty Nerds Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm Rich Dotson. He's Garrett Price. How's it going? It's going good. It's just two of us today uh, and tomorrow's show. We got a couple people out with uh, some personal things they got going on. So we'll do a little show, just uh, you and I, a little, little intimacy. You know what? It, it, it's it been the two of us a lot lately. It's, it's almost like we're dating at this point. <laughs> verbally, verbally intimate. I like it. I like it. <laughs> Uh, we're doing today's show and tomorrow's show. We're you know we're wrapping up the wide receivers and tight ends or that we did last week, buys and sells. We're gonna do buys this episode. Tomorrow's episode will be the sells. We'll get into a mock draft, superflex mock draft uh, next week, which should be fun. I know oh, yeah. Sleeper uh, just put all their rookies in there too, so maybe we could do one with the rookies. And kind of see how that goes. And I'll just play along and like get, draft the high end rookies and then stop because I have no idea what the hell I'm talking about yet. <laughs> Not my deep dive, but uh, it's fun. It's fun this time of year because, you know, in January, February, leading up to the draft, as as we see these draft picks start to increase in value. Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's a real rough time to trade for draft picks like now because. In reality, those like unless you get an offer that's going to blow you away, those picks are only going to increase in value. Uh, right. I'm in I'm in a league that has one one and one four, and I've gotten so many offers for that one four. Uh, I'm getting thrown at like you know fair offers too. You know, I, I showed you the one where I'm getting I can get Brees Hall and a 25 first, which might be mid could could be mid. It depends how the team works out for Kincaid in one four. And it just, I could use a receiver. I'm getting offers of like Devontae Smith and Debo Samuel. And I'm just, I'm just pumping the brakes on everything because in real, in reality, you know, the price increases on those draft picks and, and knowing me, I don't really have many of those going around as it is typically. Yeah. That's pretty, that's pretty rare for you. And, and, and I know why people would be interested in one four, because at that point you're, you're guaranteeing yourself either Marvin Harrison jr. Or one of those top three quarterbacks. So it is kind of a nice little spot to be in for you right there. Yeah, it's going to be interesting because <clears throat> I originally, you know, at 1-4, sitting here going, no, I, I really want to, like, I told the guy who offered it originally, I said, let me dig into the Malik Neighbors tape more and then readjust. And the more I sit here, not even the more I sit here now, but the more it goes along, it's like, man, Jaden Daniels is probably going to go top three. If Jaden Daniels goes top three, it's going to be re- I'm going to be really hard-pressed if Marvin Harrison Jr. slips into that top three, which I don't understand that would happen. But for me, like if I get a quarterback and go top five, top three in the NFL draft, it's going to be real hard to pass up even for um, a, an elite wide receiver. The only difference is I actually have one four in that draft as well, or a one, one, I'm sorry. So, oh. so, and, but you know, my other quarterback is Trevor Lawrence. It's one of those drafts I did last year where I included the 24 picks picks. along with the 23 picks is what you're able to pick. And I did two of those drafts and I did one where I just went, you know, almost no picks. I took the one, one, and then so I have Caleb Williams in that draft as well. And then the following one, I did one where like, I thought I, like I took some veterans and see if I could kind of compete now, but like, how would that look if I took a whole bunch of picks? So I got the one, 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 four, one, 12, Fully expecting to get a receiver and quarterback, but now the Jaden Daniel news, like if he falls here and he goes one three to New England, we'll have to see it. I'll have to watch the tape the, and get the into good it. News, the good news for you on that, because I remember when you had that draft and you're talking to me about your picks and kind of your, you know, it's too far out. We don't know for sure, but this is kind of my plan. Your original plan was potentially to take Brock Bowers at one four. And yeah. now you could trade back to one six or one seven. And still get Brock Bowers plus a bunch of extra draft capital. Yeah, we say that now, though, here in uh, late January. And I fully expect Bowers when he goes. We'll see. I guess it all, it really does d- depend on where Bowers goes in the NFL right. draft. You know, I've seen recently, you know, like with Kuipers and Brugler's mock drafts and Jeremiah's, they have him going outside the top 10 saying, oh, positional pet value, positional value, which to we'll me, see. like, 
like when I dive into tape even more, I'm like, yeah, positional value, my took us. Uh, that that guy, that guy's the best Hawkinson tight end I've ever scouted. Moved up for a reason. Pitts moved up for a reason. But that being said, we could see Odunze and Neighbors also go that early, and yeah. that could, that could push Bowers down. Every the going back to those guys' mock drafts, the Jeremiah, the Brugler, the Mel Kuypers, all of them have. It's like a dynasty super flex startup. It goes quarterback, 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 wide receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver. In every single one, it just goes six of them. And it's like, where does Brock Bowers falls? And he, he definitely deserves to go top 10, uh, in my opinion. So it's fun. And this time of the year, when you're talking trades, it's, it's definitely some of the guys I have. They're not first round pedigree trades that I'm going to bring up today, but guys that I find, uh, or some good value in your draft. And that's what you're looking for in Dynasty right now. Like, this is the whole fun of Dynasty. Like, not only are you sitting around, you're in Dynasty Nerds film room watching that all 22 film, which mm -hmm. we have hundreds and hundreds of hours on these rookies, all 22 film. But you're also going through your league. You're losing the Dynasty GM. Look at the league analyzer. Kind of seeing where you stand in your league. See where your weaknesses are. See where your strengths are. By positional value. Where you stack up versus the rest of your league. And trying to start making trades. I mean, this is what this is what makes you love Dynasty Fantasy Football is there is no off season where everybody else's fantasy seasons is over. You're sitting here going, Okay, what kind of trades that you want to make? Yeah. Like for the first guy here on my list I'm gonna talk about, I went out in every dynasty league I'm in, I think except for one who I, I who usually plays hardball, and I set an offer out for this player in every single league I'm in. Um, I already got a couple of notes, but that's okay. <laughs> I got a couple uh counters that I, I didn't feel very comfortable with, but we'll see how the rest goes through because I sent them all out a couple hours ago. And I'll, I'll dive right in, if you don't mind, to my first yeah, receiver. Let's do it. <clears throat> so, my first player that I'm really intrigued in that I want to go out there and put all offers in, which I did today, is Marvin Mims for the Denver Broncos. I like this one. This is a receiver that, you know, I really liked his tape last year a lot. Him and Cedric Tillman were. On, the, on right on that like next that third tier of our receivers I liked. Mm -hmm. And if we remember, this is you know, not only did I like him, but the Denver Broncos like Marvin Mims as well. They traded up from sixty eight to sixty three, the very last pick in the second round to go get Marvin Mims. And all in all, for you know, on the team he was on and what was going on around him, he had a pretty good year. Uh such a good year in one aspect that he was named to the PFWA all rookie team today as a kick returner. So and I, and I love players like that that have that are dynamic in the return game too because it just guarantees that, you know they're they're, they're well respected by the coaches going to be on the roster. And Mims is coming off a year he played in all seventeen games, forty five receptions, five hundred seventy five yards, and five touchdowns. And you know those those stats might not blow you away, but for rookies that that's a pretty solid stat line. Not coming off of that thousand yard season, but pretty solid. Definitely was what what was around him. You know, Russ Wilson. Turn for himself uh, was that quarterback, but he had Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy at receiver to take away from him. And this is a guy who had, he averaged 26.9 yards per catch, Gary. It was the highest in the NFL amongst receivers that had at least 10 receptions. And on top of that, Mims also had the most yards per target with 22 and the most yards after the uh, at the catch average at 18.9. That's among all NFL receivers, and that is pretty impressive. Definitely for a guy that had some good yards after the catch, he averaged eight yards after the catch, and that's per reception, which was second best amongst all the the rookie receivers this year. But it's really impressive about that eight yards per catch after the fact is how deep his targets were. Like he was a big play oh, way downfield. Yeah, so the fact that he's catching the ball deep. And then getting yards after the catch shows you that not he does have speed. He does have elusiveness. He can't stack. He can't stem and get out there and get separation in his route. So I mentioned he made all rookie team as well. He averaged 44 yards per kick, uh, kick return and 45 yards per run return. It just shows that he's a very electric player. And for me to go out there for a guy like Denzel Mims, who's really good yards after the catch on a team that we don't know how it's going to look in 2024. Did you, you say know, Denzel they're... Mims? Marvin Mims, it... right? Marvin Mims. Yeah, yeah, it is Marvin Mims. <laughs> just just I... double checking. <laughs> Can't get over that old Baylor. Real uh, by low. Fish hook. Yeah, real by low. So <laughs> as it stands right now, like we don't know how Denver's going to look next year. You know, Tim Patrick probably for sure gone. There were already rumors about Jerry Judy getting traded this offseason. And it, 
you feel I feel more now than ever they gotta trade him because Judy's up like his contract is a first round pick. He's owed a decent amount of money. So either they gotta extend him or they gotta trade him, which more likely they're gonna trade him. This is a team that's already projected to be twenty million over the cap. Uh Pat, uh Cortland Sutton, he could be gone as well. He he has no more guaranteed money and he he's getting paid pretty well. And they might just tear this thing down to the bones and reset. It depends what they do at quarterback, how they feel on this team. But there is a chance that Marvin Mims goes into this season in 2024 as the number one receiver on this roster. This is a team that has, you know, not not a, a ton of, you know, draft capital. They have they have a decent amount. They have the 12th pick uh, overall. Then they have a third, a fourth, two fifth, and some sixth. But they have a lot of re, uh, re- holes to fill here because not only do they have to, you know, figure out the situation of quarterback, but they're going to have to cut a lot of players and redo contracts here as well and fill those holes via the draft. So I don't really see, even though this this draft is super deep at receiver, maybe they attack it at 12. I, I That'd be a weird thing to attack at 12 when you got already Marvin Mims on your roster to spend a second round and how many holes you're going to have, but maybe in the third, but it still has gives Marvin Mims a pretty good chance to be the number one receiver on the Denver Broncos roster going into 2024. Now, is the quarterback situation going to be pretty no but this could be a team that's probably gonna be training a lot to play in the AFC West they just got Jim Harbaugh so except for the Chargers to be better Raiders should be a little bit better than they were this past year and of course you got Pat Mahomes so this is probably gonna be the worst team in the division constantly trailing and when you got a guy who could burn and stretch a field like Marvin Mims late in the game that's who they're gonna be chucking the ball down to and hopefully that can turn into some big time plays for your fantasy team a, a, a sophomore going into be the sophomore step up kind of player here great value you could probably go out there and get marvin mims probably for two seconds since he was drafted in the second year like you're not going to get him for a second straight up in most cases because a lot of people drafted marvin mims in the second this year so you're probably going to have to offer a 24 second and a 25 second uh, maybe a 24 second that's relatively higher and a, and, and a third might get it done. But as we see this year in the draft, if you need a receiver, yes. Are you going to get an upside receiver in this draft? Yeah. But if you pick in a high part of your second round, you're probably getting the seventh, eighth, ninth best receiver. Cause this whole first round out of those quarterbacks and tight end, it's going to be receivers. We might see a running back slip in there when it's all said and done. And definitely be playing non-super flex leagues. If you're in non-super flex leagues, you might see 10 receivers go off in the first round of your rookie draft. So for me, I'm going to go ahead and bet on a guy that I saw already translate into the NFL this past season who's already in line to be in a great position to be the guy in the next season, 2024, and all of that, all his stats that he did in 2023, his draft capital, and where he's looking roster-wise, I think Marvin Mims is my number one wide receiver buy, bang for the buck value here late January in 2024. I love, I love your wide receiver buy here. I think it's one that I've already jumped on board with in that most recent startup that I talked about. Uh, I took him. Uh, I got him in the 13th round of the oh, startup wow. and it matches wow. up pretty well because current nerds ADP right now, he is currently coming off the board as wide receiver 57. So roughly pick 311 in nerds ADP wide receivers going right in front of him. Rashad Bateman, Kadarius, Tony, Demario Davis, right behind him, Michael Wilson, Jacoby Myers, Cortland Sutton. I would rather have Marvin Mims over all of those players. Yeah, that's absolutely uh, gross. Actually, if I look at my rankings overall here, if I'm taking a look, I'm going to dive down here. I have Marvin Mims currently ranked right behind Deontay Johnson and right ahead of Jamison Williams and Marquise Brown, then Cortland Sutton, Calvin Ridley. He's my wide receiver 39. So, 39. You know, yeah, I because, dude, I love the youth. I love the yep. upside. I love the opportunity. And, you know, we, we say carries for a running back, carries for a running back, carries for a running back, and that leads to high-end production. Send them receivers, targets. And I'm just going to go ahead and it, here in January just hope and forecast that he's going to be the number one receiver on this team. Worst-case scenario, number two on this team that's going to be trailing a lot. So good I, good job out of you. And I, and I love to hear that, too, because that shows that the community is pretty down or not pretty down, but kind of not like, aware aware 
And those are always my favorite guys to buy. Guys that I liked in the in the rookie draft the year before that put up this kind of season, only 500-something yards, a team that's in turmoil. They don't know who the quarterback's going to be because this is dynasty fantasy football. Like, I need long-term value. And these are the kind of guys that I like to bank on. And I'm okay if he puts up another year. We'll say he puts up like 800 yards this year, and he has 53 receptions. Nothing crazy. Like, I'm still excited about where this can go in the future. I think he's a super talented kid, and I love the overall community value of Marvin Mims right now. I do have him ranked higher in my rankings, but I feel like he deserves to be there uh, for what he offers and brings to the table. Now, we do have a ton of rookies coming in, so he's going to get pushed down here down uh, bit, yeah. eventually, probably down like, you know, into the, like the later 40s, somewhere around there. But still... I, I, these are the kind of players who you always want to go out and target in dynasty fantasy football, right? Like not these older veterans, guys getting closer to a second contract, guys going to year two, these sophomores that had good tape, but not a lot of good opportunity in the NFL and coming in with the realization, you know, that not every rookie is going to come out and be gangbusters to come out there and just produce at a high level right away, which is what everybody wants, of course, but doesn't always happen. We don't get the guys that come out and we don't get, they don't become Puka Nakua right away, right? They don't get the Garrett Wilsons that shine uh, earlier or other rookies like that. So love that value for you and your startup. Who do you got at wide receiver, Garrett? Yeah, real quick, I just wanted to mention too, I do have him uh, above consensus as well. I have him at wide receiver 45. Um, oh, so not close. quite as high as you, but he's going off the board. What did I say? 56. Yeah. Uh, so so clearly I'm 10 spots, 11 spots ahead of of where we have him. So I think I think we're unanimous on that definitely marvin mims uh, a very good buy all right gotta talk about a little bit underdog here a little new thing that going on uh, underdog fancy pick em champions dynasty nerds in alabama tennessee wyoming and mississippi this one is for you underdog has launched a brand new game called pick em champions just for you it's a new player versus player pick em game that's all about strategy and fun choose two to five players place your entry and if your pick hits you win big. When new users deposit $10 or more on Underdog, they will match your deposit up to $100. You will also receive a free promo code for us for a free year of the Dynasty GM and the Nerd Herd Bundle. And what a great time to have it because that gives you access to all our tools, all our rookie breakdown content, the Nerd Score, and the Dynasty Nerds Film Room, and everything else we offer for the Dynasty Nerds memberships. And for our current Nerd Herd members, we'll give you that cool, great, most comfortable shirt in the world, guaranteed to increase your high five intake, the Dynasty Nerds t-shirt waiting just for you. So click the link in the podcast description, head to Underdog Fantasy, use the promo code NERDS, and deposit at least $10 to start playing our new Pick'em Championship game. Then be on the lookout for your Dynasty Nerds promo code within 24 hours of your deposit. New members only. Again, that is promo code nerds at underdog fantasy. So it's interesting. Last year on our wide receiver buy sell episode at the end of the season, this was actually my wide receiver sell. Uh, but it just shows <laughs> that dynasty, it's it's not as much about the specific player. It's about the value of the player at the time. And we've seen this player's value overall drop quite a bit in the eyes of the community. And that's Terry McLaurin. Terry McLaurin, a guy that was kind of that late round darling that we had. You know, anytime you can find a wide receiver third round or later, you cherish those players because you got them significantly cheaper than you should have had to pay for somebody that produces at their level. And Terry McLaurin's been the poster child of, you know, solid low end wide receiver two, high end wide receiver three for basically his entire career. That being said, this team is currently in turmoil, and I think because of that, his values dipped quite a bit. Nobody really knows exactly what's happening uh, with the Washington Commanders, and similar to what we talked about earlier, his value is going to drop as well. Uh, currently, he's at wide receiver 33. Uh, right ahead of him, Quinton Johnston. Uh, I would much rather have Terry McLaurin. Uh, right behind him, Calvin Ridley and Jamison Williams and Jerry Judy. So, you know, kind of in that tier there of guys, I really like Terry McLaurin a lot. But here was the reason that it it sparked enough for me to say, I want to make Terry McLaurin my buy. The reason for it was, one, 
this Washington Commanders team is picking at two. I keep thinking they're picking at three. Or no. They're at yeah, they're at two, right, Rich? I keep they're switching them to the yeah. They're yeah, picking at they're two. two. They're gonna get Drake May or maybe Caleb Williams. Either way, they're getting a very, very good quarterback. The best quarterback that they've had in a very long time. And I don't feel like that's being reflected. And on top of that, and look, this is all speculative right now. Um, but why uh Ben Johnson? Ben Johnson is rumored to be the leading candidate for the next head coach of the Washington football team, now known as the Commanders. So if you're telling me you're going to get an elite-level quarterback and you're going to be adding what we believe is the best offensive mind available right now, that's a pretty good combination to add to a veteran wide receiver. We could see him now, granted, he's later in his career than this guy, but we could see the same type of thing that happened with Nico Collins, a veteran player that just kind of needed the right quarterback and the right coach and the right play caller to kind of all come in and really boost his stock because Terry McLaurin's out there winning. He just needs somebody to give him the ball on a regular basis. And so I think he's one of those veteran players that's being a little bit slept on right now, but I think could provide good value and could exceed, like I said, He's wide receiver 33 right now. So you're drafting him as a low end wide receiver th three. I think he could easily ascend into the wide receiver two range once again. Yeah, he's 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 ADP is like right around where he finishes. He finishes wide receiver 31 mm -hmm. overall in PPR leagues. And now he's playing almost every game except for one as well. And it's one of those, it's a shame because Terry McLaren's gonna be 29 years old this year so he is getting a little up there in age and a really dynamic receiver deserved a contract extension and to me this is uh i i don't mind the buy as long as i'm a contender right like as long as like i feel like hey man i can use another receiver you mentioned drake may come in there possibly maybe Jaden daniels uh i would i would expect when it's all said and done it's gonna be drake may uh we'll see but you know Real excited about Ben Johnson, the way he'll be able to scheme uh, for Terry McLaurin. They still got a former first-round pick, Jahan Dotson. There's been a, a massive disappointment as well outside his early rookie year when he was scoring all those touchdowns. So Terry could be the number one option on there. I, we, they have Logan Thomas at tight end. We don't know what they're going to be doing at running back out there, but it's more about, like you said, scheme, offensive system. If Ben Johnson gets a head coaching job out there, that automatically gives Terry McLaurin an uptick. And even if you're a middle-of-the-road team, this might be the player that could kind of either one, get you over the edge or two, at least increases value. So whatever you paid for him and your team doesn't quite kind of get there. Say like you put a couple pieces together and you trade for Terry McLaurin now, where it's like early February. And by time, say October hits after you get through training camp, you got a couple injuries come through. Maybe come week four, week five, week six in the season, Terry McLaurin have done enough where say you paid a second and an upside player or something along those lines, whatever you paid, you might be able to get a greater return. So what's an underpaid, uh, that doesn't even fit that category of what I <laughs> want to say, but just a better overall value. So I love the player. I always have, but you know, situations key Garrett, and he's just been in a really bad situation and not being able to overcome it for a while. Now he's the face of the franchise, but a franchise that just needs another face. Yep. Absolutely. So we'll see, obviously, you know, some of this is speculative. Obviously, we know that they're getting a quarterback. We're still speculating on who uh, the next head coach is going to be. But typically what you see teams do is if they just got rid of a defensive coach, they bring in an offensive-minded head coach. If they yeah. just got done with an offensive-minded head coach, they bring in a defensive-minded head coach. So, um, you know, and the fact that that Ben Johnson wasn't scooped up right away is very surprising to me. Uh, but if, if he ends up there and he gets to, to groom a young quarterback – Terry McLaurin's going to have a lot of good opportunity. Yeah, that, to me, that just tells me, I think, one, the Chargers were always dead set on Jim Harbaugh, who got hired today by the Chargers. Like, they're always dead set on it. So that's where we thought he could go, but then it, it turns out like they wanted Jim Harbaugh. Um, Tennessee, I don't think that Ben Johnson was interested in Tennessee, so I don't think that really matters uh, as much. And then Atlanta, you know, is he still in the mix for Atlanta? I'd still lean Bill Belichick is going to take that job, if I had to guess. And when I, and I've heard the same rumors as you that Washington's all in and kind of like on Ben Johnson, kind of the, 
everything I heard about the Chargers being all in on Jim Harbaugh, I heard they're all in on Ben Johnson. And this is new ownership with deep pockets. So there's a very good chance they throw enough cash his way to lure him there. And, you know, to be honest with you, for Ben Johnson, too, to have to have that allure to be the new uh, owner's first head coach and to mm-hmm. get a young, the number two pick, that's very attractive to a head coach, right? To have that number two pick, get your pick at quarterback, whether he likes Jaden Daniels, which uh, as well, if Ben Johnson's the commanders and he takes Jaden Daniels, they take Jaden Daniels over Drake May, what a massive boost. I mean, now you're really talking about like Jaden Daniels pa- paired up with Ben Johnson and hitting offense he's a scheme for him about taking Jaden Daniels ahead of Marvin Harrison Jr. in Superflex Leagues. Like it's going to be a conversation that we're going to have to talk through here. As good as the wide receiver is. Yeah. You know, you get top five draft capital, these quarterbacks in Superflex Leagues. It's really hard to pass that up. It really is. So uh, it's going to be an interesting situation and oversaw exciting because I love when bad teams have been rolling bad for a while can finally have for their fan bases kind of turn it around. You know, like I'm so happy for Detroit right now to go out there and be in playing NFC championship. It's all the dreams that I make of uh dream of as a Browns fan who's got, you know, the biggest thing that's ever happened to me is I beat, we beat the Steelers in the playoffs two years ago. Oh. And that's the greatest thing that's happened to me in over 35 years. You know what I mean? Like I'm 44 years old and that's like, that's, that's, <laughs> I just live in it's not even apathy. It still hurts every year. Right. Uh, even a year like this, it's a, I, I tell everybody as a Browns fan, like nobody's ever got it worse as a fan base and nobody's been in the storylines for craziness as much as we have. And I'll sit here and argue to them blue in the face. Nobody even comes close not uh, even. at all. And I would say almost any franchise whatsoever in football is Trump of all. So I love it when a, a team like the lions who haven't won the playoffs since 91, 94 as well. And they're making the NFC championship game. So I'd love to see the commanders come back for their fame base too. They had to deal with that terrible owner and what they've had to deal with. So hope it all works out. Fingers all crossed. Right. Let's get on to our tight end buys here. And Garrett, I'm sticking with the same exact team. Uh, wasn't intentional. I, I wondered that. I, I That was actually going to be a question of mine was, do you worry that if one breaks out, the other one won't? No, not today's NFL. So, okay. All right. So we, you obviously, this podcast is coming out uh, a day later, but we had our buys and sells and I had mine in on shoot Monday. I think I texted him over yeah. to you guys who I was buy, who I was using my, for my buys and sells and did research. And I, I, I swear I didn't even realize it until I like started. I, I did Mar- Marvin Mims research first and, you know, watching tape and doing some and reading everything I could possibly could about the local beat writers who they had to say, but then I, I didn't realize until I started breaking down Greg Dulcich <laughs> at tight end. Uh, it took me like probably 10 minutes of like researching and I was like, oh my gosh, I got two Broncos on my team. What am I do- what am I doing here? <laughs> but here I am. Greg Dulcich of the Denver Broncos is my tight end buy for late January right now. And right now, this is a guy who really hasn't, you know, done a whole lot. He he pretty much missed the entire year this year with a hamstring injuries and foot injuries. He had a ham in- hamstring injury week one. Uh tried to come back later, hurt his hamstring again. Then came back and like the first practice he had after finally his hamstring coming right, he hurt his foot. So he missed, he missed a lot. Of, he missed almost he missed the entire year, pretty much. And he's also a player. He's missed twenty two games in his first two years. And I, I read, I was reading in some articles out of Denver, which is what I love to do when I'm studying some players, like really get into the beat writers, local guys, to see what they're saying about guys and. They're not really too concerned about the injury. They said it was more just bad luck than anything for Greg Dulcich. And if I'm going to piggyback on everything that I said about, um, you know, Marvin Mims and how he could just get catapulted into the number one receiver, Greg Dulcich is in the same exact situation at tight end. You know, they have Adam Troutman and Chris Manhurts this year at tight end. But those guys are blockers. And Adam Troutman is a free agent this year. So Greg Dalton is somebody who I really liked his rookie season. I thought he had a really good rec- rookie season. I thought he looked really, really impressive as that receiving tight end. I mean, this is somebody he, aver- during his rookie year, he averaged 5.5 targets per game, which was third amongst all tight ends. And his average depth of target was 10.3 yards. I mean, so this is somebody who was an actual legitimate breakdown the seam, 
down the field threat for his quarterback. And when it comes to targets, like I mentioned, not only does Sean Payton, you know, we, we said we just talked about Ben Johnson. Sean Payton has historically loved the tight end. On average, if you look over the last five years, Sean Payton targets his tight ends 13.6 targets per game. And it that shows, because even last year, the guys like Adam Troutman, they had another guy in there, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but they're 11. They had the 11th most targets to their tight end last year, and that was Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy as well. So we know Sean Payton likes to target the tight end. Greg Dulcich is athletic enough. He's got good hands. He can really, he's really good down the seam. He offers some good upside. He's only 24 years old. And right now, the fact that he hasn't done anything, after his rookie year, we saw an ADP jump in Greg Dulcich. We've seen an absolute collapse in ADP right now in Greg Dulcich overall. So for somebody that's going to be utilized in a game plan, a guy who has a chance to be the number two target on this team when it comes to targets, with a head coach that loves to target that player. During his rookie year, when he actually played from six week six to week week fifteen, he was tight end twelve overall and in PPR league. So this is somebody who could be a tight end one. And I'm not saying to go out there and trade for Greg Dulcich as your di- tight end one, but this is a great guy to bring in as your backup tight end. You can never have enough to, uh, tight end depth. So if you can get out here and you have a late second and there's no tight ends out there and you're shallow at tight end, this is a great gamble at the position for a player that could come in, be a red zone target for this team. Marvin Mims, he's five foot eleven. Greg Dulcich is 6'4". So when you talk about a red zone guy, this could be great. The Broncos really struggled last year in the red zone because they didn't really, like, outside of Cortland Sutton, they didn't have that big guy. Um, like I said, Adam Troutman's more of a, a, a receiving tight end. So this is somebody to come in and actually be a really good red zone threat as well they could get down there. I think Greg Dulcich would come in and be a great factor for this Broncos team to turn their offense and get it going next year. And like I mentioned, you know, whether it be a rookie quarterback they bring in, a veteran, this is a team that's probably going to be trailing a lot, trying to play a lot of catch-up. And I look for Greg Dulcich to be the safety net for that quarterback. If this guy can stay healthy, I could foresee another tight end one finish for him. Now, is that going to be tight end number 8, 9, 10, 11, 12? Probably. But for the value you're going to pay for a late second, definitely in tight end premium. If you're playing tight end premium got leagues, a tight end 12 in regular PPR leagues, that's something you're going to start on a week-in, week-out basis because they're going to give you mid-range to low-end tight end uh, wide receiver two numbers overall. I know what you know during his rookie year, I started Greg Dulcich as a rookie in a tight end premium league when I was starting because I usually start two tight ends when I had the opportunity to in tight end premium leagues if I got the depth. And he was averaging in every game he played double-digit points every single week. And I think he bring that back to the table here in 2024 for a late second. Maybe, a, and honestly, by the time your draft comes around, Garrett, you know, 3-1, 3-2, I guarantee there's going to be a player on the board that own, that has Greg Dulcich on their team that they want to draft one of those players there. And you'll be like, hey, man, I, g- give me Greg Dulcich and you can have 3-1. You can have 3-2. You can have 3-3. And that will probably be good enough to be get it done. You might be able to throw that offer out now. It might it might not get it done. But I think come draft day, that might be just enough intrigue on the prospect that's on the board to get you a very good upside young tight end like Greg Dulcich. Yeah, Greg Dulcich, so I was 100% in with Marvin Mims. Dulcich, I'm a little more like, ah, I could go either way on it. On the, on the one side, I think you've made some excellent points. There's a really, really high ceiling. On the flip side, he has been very uh, inconsistent with his play because of injuries, uh, and we just his don't play's know been happened. consistent. He just hasn't been on the field to be consistent. Right, right. The best, the best ability is availability, and <laughs> yes, it is. Is has is, been a little spotty, a little spotty. Um, so I, I think with this is, which I'm totally fine with. It's a it's a boom bust play. Yes, is there a a world? where Greg Dulcich is a top eight tight end this coming year? Absolutely. Is there a world where he's not even in the top 30? Absolutely. But yep. what I like about it is at least give me a chance at the home run. 
Like, at least give me a shot at it. Because there's plenty of tight ends where I already know he's going to be tight end 14. I, like, yeah. which is fine if I have to, but I don't... I, I, I need I need a chance for more. And when I say I already know he's going to be tight end 14, that means he's going to be somewhere between 9 and 16. Like, that's basically all the same player. Um, I, I do think that there's a world where he becomes a high-end option for that offense, which most offenses don't have that high-end guy. So with all of that being said, I'm in on this. I'm just not as confident because I could see – a very, very wide range of outcomes for Dulcich. So just take that with for what it's worth. I agree. Dude, I agree 100%. And it, the, the thing here is, like, this was the hardest position for me to do the buys and the sells because mm -hmm. it's so it's so cut and dry, right? Like, mm -hmm. it's so cut and dry where, the tier, where, where tier one is, where tier two is, and then almost everybody's in tier three, right? Like, almost everybody. And... You know, I'm not going to come out here and say, oh, buy Michael Mayer because he's going to be the next Trey McBride because the guy who drafted Michael Mayer isn't selling Michael Mayer. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like, I'm not going to go out there and say, buy Trey McBride. I'm not going to go out there and say, you know what I mean? Like, hey, go, or, you know, like, hey, go buy David Njoku. He finished as tight end number one the second half of the season. He was the number one tight end overall the second half of the season. He was the number one tight end during the playoffs. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to say that because, it's it's it, you're not it's not a good buy. You're paying fair value for David and Joku. Everybody knows what you have. Everybody knows what you have in Trey McBride. So I was looking for that player that was the boomer bust kind of guy, and I wanted to find the one guy that I thought like, okay, if I had to pick one of these guys that's boomer bust, who do I believe in? And I want the guy, even though it's a small sample size, that at least I saw it from. Right. With paired with the head coach that loves to utilize the tight end. Yep. And kind of goes back to the same thing Marvin Mins. It's just about opportunity. So this was rough for me because even like we go to the next show, my my cell, it's going to be pretty chalk. It's going to be, it's going to seem like, oh yeah, okay. Um, it was, I, for this position, it was real hard because every time I looked at a guy, I'm like, okay, can I make a case for this? It's like, okay, no, that, does, that doesn't work. Hey guys, let me tell you about our friends at Sleeper. Guess what? Our app is the mini is live Ooh. on sleeper right now. The dynasty so GM, pretty. you can use the analyzer. That you can use nice. the, uh, the, the trade calculator. And my favorite thing is the inbox, right? Where all your trades from all your sleeper leagues are right there. You can actually push trades through the actual sleeper at. And right now we could be more excited to be partners with them. And right now, if you don't know, they are doing DFS. And I know how many people that play dynasty play DFS as well. And right now there's not a better place to play DFS than sleeper they're offering up to a hundred times their, your entry the highest payout in the whole dfs market right now you can track your fantasy players and your sleeper picks in real time all you gotta do is choose two to eight of your favorite players from pregame live in game or even across different sports pick more or less than the predicted stats and only on sleeper you can get up to a hundred times your payout you can share it with your friends and get rewarded together make sure you use that promo code nerd so our friends know that friends sent them their way Ooh, um no way. <laughs> and get your deposit match and have Friendly. a good time you know, have all your dfs all of your fantasy leagues and now even a dynasty gem in one spot it is fully operational inside sleeper right now and then when you're a nerd herd member you get that full access to that and remember Dyn you also want to download the dynasty Nerds app because they're both in there check it out check our friend sleeper check out the dfs use that promo code nerd get your whole estate <laughs> I'm real excited to hear who your guy is. Honestly, who your bias? Well, are you talking about? Originally, I gave you a guy, and I was like, "This is who I'm doing." And in typical Garrett style, I start digging into it, and I'm like, "Nah, never mind. That's not who I'm doing." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> which happens almost every time where I'm like, "Yeah, I was going one direction, and then I then I pivoted." And partly it was because I was looking through the ADP, and I still can't believe that the community doesn't have this guy higher. And so I'm going with a high end buy because if I'm buying tight end, I'm either, like we said, buying a boom bus guy, hoping to catch it on the boom, or I'm paying up for that top tier and I'm going to pay up for that top tier. I'm going to buy TJ Hawkinson right now. Nerds ADP. He's tight end four. There's no reason he should be that low. And it's simply because of the ACL. And I get it. That sucks. You're going to miss him for six games, eight games, whatever it is. 
But when he's on the field, he is truly elite, including the game that he was injured. He tied Travis Kelsey for the highest points per game on the season. You remove that game that he had to leave early due to injury. He had the highest points per game on the season. So TJ Hawkinson wasn't just elite. He was the number one tight end when he was out there on the field. And look, I get it. There are a lot of other players that are exciting that can be ready for you week one. But if you can have just a smidge of patience, if you can just wait a few weeks, that elite tight end, Rich, you are the king of talking about this. If there is one position that having an elite player can really make a difference, that's the tight end position because it's the haves and the have-nots. And if you have TJ Hawkinson, you are a have. Right now, like I said, he is tight end four according to ADP. And he is literally, so uh, he's picked 40 overall, uh, pick 404. At 405 and 406 are Trey McBride and Kyle Pitts. So that's telling me that there are plenty of drafts where he's not actually even going until tight end six because they're all lumped together. I just recently took him at tight end eight. Yeah, so that's what I was going to bring up, that you, you're going to start up currently yeah. and where you got him blew my mind. And yeah. like... I told you, I told you when you were sitting here in person, like when you told me that, that got me the itch to do a startup right now. Just so I swear, just so I could draft great value in Hawkinson, who is my tight end one overall until he tore his MCL and ACL. And then I moved Laporte ahead of him, but he was my number one throughout that. So sorry, keep going. Yeah. No, 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 no. We're on the same page. So, so I, I think that's the big thing is look, we, we get worried. Tell, about tell people where you got him. No, tell people how, where you got Hawkinson to start up. Sorry. I, I know yeah. I, yeah. I so I got, look, I'll pull it up right now. I got him. Um, I got him at tight end. I believe it was tight end eight. Let me, let me double check. I don't, I don't want to tell lies here. So let's see. It was one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven tight end seven. Sorry, Steelin. not eight. I got him at seven. Stealing. Uh, yeah, and, it, and it, it's it's recency bias. It's recency bias due to an injury, which again, I love buying it. I love buying players of that when it's just like ACL, MCL, where it's nothing minor, but we've seen historically people can come back pretty well from that. And especially the tight end position where I'm not relying quite as much on those quick twists twitch things those bursty things i don't need that as much at the tight end position as i do other positions uh we're hearing strong feelings towards kirk cousins going back to minnesota so it's it looks like it's going to be business as usual uh and, and for anybody that's like well you know he was only good when uh when uh we we, we had justin jefferson out i don't know that he would have been that good a couple of his best games were when justin jefferson was there so it's not only when Justin Jefferson's gone. He he plays very well when he's there, when he's not. Doesn't matter. He is a productive player. He gets targets, and he makes plays with the football. So, look, for me, I don't love buying the middling tight end. Either give me the, the bargain guy that could maybe rise up boards, or I'm going to just pay up to get the guy that can actually – for sure make a difference. And I think that's, I think that's DJ Hawkinson. If I'm a have not, I mean, if you look at, I have 25 dynasty teams. If you look at all 25, when it comes to tight end, I am a have because <laughs> I don't, I'm I, like I said, I mean, you said like I sit here, if you listen to I search podcast and we're coming up on the 10 year anniversary here for 10 years, I've been preaching the same subject. If you go to the fantasy uh, football expo when I go on the dynasty panel I say this every single year to the audience like they're the haves and the have nots it's the one positional value that gives you the edge so if you look at all my dynasty rosters I think except for one one roster which I'm I'm trying I'm trying still I'm a have I have one of those top five guys on every single mo one of my rosters because like you said I am willing to pay up to get that guy I will overpay for that guy because I want to be a have. I want that difference. Maker. I know I can go out there and get moves, draft, trade for wide receivers, running backs, get the quarterbacks. It is so hard to get the tight ends because when the teams have those guys, they're not giving them up. They don't want to give them up because they don't want to be a have not. And there's teams 
you'll see Garrett, there's multiple teams I have in Dynasty that have Sam Laporta and Dalton Cade. Yep. That have, you know, I think Hawkinson might be my number one own tight end and across the, across the board because because I loved his tape coming out too. And I, I, during his rookie year, I went out and made sure I got him in a ton of leagues. So there's a lot of leagues where I have Hawkinson, Laporta, Hawkinson, Kincaid. There's a league where I have, um, in, in that one league where I have the 1-1, one, 1-4, one, mm-hmm. one, and 112. That's tight end premium. You know who my tight ends are? Sam Laporta, Dalton Kincaid, and David Njoku. Oof. Because during my rookie Oof. draft, you know, during the, the startup draft, those guys were rookies that I believed in. I made sure I grabbed those guys as rookies. So I'm always a have in the tight end position because I want that leg up on my opponent. When I get to the playoffs, when I get to my championship game, I want to make sure I'm a have, right? Like we saw many years that the championship team had Travis Kelsey on it. You know, mm-hmm. I, would, I would bet this year majority had Christian McCaffrey on their championship caliber Correct. teams. So I have no problem overpaying in most people's eyes. What's an overpay for the tight end. And it, and it, and it makes what Brock Bowers is so intriguing this year. Cause he could, by the time this year is over, he could be dynasty tight end one overall Brock Bowers. He's that talented. Yeah. And I would probably bet. I think I would love to see the odds of DraftKings. I think the odds would be very good, like almost minus the odds of Brock Bowers eventually being the dynasty consensus tight end one. Like yeah. that's how good he is. So I have no problem like being real aggressive, say like in a super flex league. And we'll talk about it when we're breaking down Brock Bowers and it goes quarterback, quarterback, Marvin Harrison, quarterback, Malik neighbors, and now you're up on the clock at 1-6, and there's Roman Dunze, and there's Brock Bowers. I would have no problem if I'm at 1-7 to 1-12 being extremely aggressive to go up there and get that player. And that's super flex tight end premium or just regular PPR because you have a chance to potentially get not only a guy that's number one at his position, which is going to be tight end, but potentially the number one guy Overall in dynasty fantasy football, you know, I felt very strongly about Hawkinson came when he came out. I feel very strongly about Dalton and Cade and Dalton and Cade's right around tight end four right around now uh, overall. And even though he's my husband, I would Brock Bowers when he gets drafted or when he gets entered into our dynasty nerds ranked, he will be ahead of Dalton and Cade for me. So which, you're having an affair is what you're telling me. Yeah. You know, I'm Oglin. I'm Oglin. I'm a, uh, I'm, sw- I'm whispering sweet nothings uh, on the side. So uh, he's that talented. And like I said, I mean, I want those guys on my roster. And who doesn't? Like you're talking, posi- like who doesn't want Brees Hall or B. John Robinson? Who doesn't want Josh Allen or Pat Mahomes? Who doesn't want Justin Jefferson or CeeDee Lamb? So who doesn't want TJ Hawkinson? Right? Like that, going back to your buy. Like right now you can get a guy who's getting valued at Number six, if you have Trey McBride, you could probably trade him straight up for TJ Hawkinson. Now, you probably could. Is that the best move? Maybe not because of youth and guy who's going to play for sure on the upside. But, I mean, Hawkinson's pretty well proven. I'd have no problem. If I had Trey McBride, I'd probably just stand pat and roll with it. But say I have, like, David Njoku or Dallas Goddard. If I can just present those to the TJ Hawkinson owner and see if they'll take that, take that straight up. I would love to do that. If well, I had, then even McBride, if I have to throw more on top, even McBride, even McBride. And, and I'm with you. I'm a big McBride guy. Love him. We can guess with pretty good certainty that the offensive situation in Minnesota is going to be almost identical to what it was last year. Like yeah. it's going to be very much the same. We cannot say that in Arizona. There is a very high likelihood that they draft a receiver, and there's a pretty good chance that that receiver is Marvin Harrison Jr. So yeah, very high chance. That changes, whereas he was getting crazy targets, maybe even just a 10% dip, 15% dip in targets. I mean, it, it makes a big difference. Yeah, that's why I, that's why I mentioned his name, because even if you look at Trey McBride, um, because obviously studying tight ends for the for this show too, on a points per game basis, Trey, Trey McBride was like 
tight end 13 overall. I mean, he was under, I think it was under 10 points on a points per game basis. It, it wasn't is, until the know, second half of the year when, when Ertz was gone that he really took off. Yeah, it really took off. But, you know, like where you finish is one thing, but points per game is the trump card. Like it's the king of all sure. statistics for fantasy football. So, yeah, even for a Trey McBride, I mean, you might be actually get. I mean, I know this sounds loony toony, but what if you get like Hawkinson plus like a third you, for Trey McBride, right? It, it, like, it's absolutely in the realm of possibility. It is 100% in the realm of possibility. So I love that buy. Um, didn't even cross my mind. <laughs> it didn't even cross my mind for uh, TJ Hawkinson. But I absolutely love that. Definitely where you where you got him to start up. And like I said, when you told me that, I told myself no startups this year. But boy, <laughs> but boy did that get me inching. And I know... We're about to do a mock draft for next week's show, and that's not going to help my cause either. That is not going to help at all. Stay tuned. We'll be back uh, tomorrow talking some wide receiver sells, some tight end sells. We'll be wearing the same exact clothes in the videos. We will. So can't we don't change. wait for that. No, we don't. <laughs> we sit here for 24 hours. <laughs> See you tomorrow, Nerd Herd. Deuces.